Well, hello, 3E. We're going to be talking about compound interest today. Uh, compound interest is a lot more beneficial to you than simple interest. Um, so our goal today is I know what compound interest is, and I can calculate the amount of investments that involve compound interest. Now, we're going to recap what we did with simple interest, uh, starting with an example. Um, I'm just going to also remind you what interest itself is. Interest is money given in exchange for the use of your money. Or alternately, it is money charged in the exchange, exchange for the use of a lender's funds. So, simple interest is calculated as a percentage of the lent or borrowed money. And compound interest is the same, although there's a slight twist to it. So here's simple interest. Uh, Derek borrowed $3,000 from Josh and promised to pay him a simple annual interest of 7%. How much interest would he have paid after five years? So how, many, how much interest would he have paid? Well, uh, interest equals PRT. Remember that from last time? Where P was the principal or the beginning amount. R was the interest rate as a decimal, 0.07. And then T is the time in years. So in this case, it's five years. And then we just plugged that in and said uh, 3,000 times 0 0.07 times 5. He would get uh, 1,000. I'm going to double check that one. 3,000 times 0 0.07 is $210, so you get that in one year, and then times five years, yep, it was 1050. 10,500, or $10,050. I'm going to say that again. Uh, $1,050. Okay. Um, so that's how much interest, and if we want to know the total amount they now have, uh, because Josh still needs to get back this $3,000, so he gets the $3,000 uh, plus $1,050 interest, so that's $4,050. Okay. So for lending his money out for five years, he now has um, another $1,050 more. Now, compound interest is not only paid on the principal, where up here we only ever use the principal in our calculation, but it's also paid on top of previous in interest payments. So you don't just get one lump sum here. After five years, um, Josh had to give, or Derek had to give Josh this uh, $1,000. Compound interest is paid on a regular basis, and then it's added on top of things. So here, instead of lending money to Derek, Josh decides to deposit the money in an account that pays 7% compound interest. How much would he have after five years? Um, so here's how we're going to do this. In year one, um, he's going to have the principal, each time he's going to have what he's invested, times 107%. That's how much he has as an amount. So in year one, he has his $3,000, and he's got 7% on top of that. So this is kind of like calculating sales tax, um, where before when we, when we calculated sales tax, we multiplied by 1.13, uh, because that was 13% um, GST and PST, or as we called it, HST, the Harmonized Sales Tax, and the one here stood for 100% of the cost. So here, it's kind of like we did that with the sales tax, um, and so we're just going to calculate this out, and we'll say, okay, it's 3,000 uh, times 1.07, and that's 3,210. So now the bank wants Josh to keep his money there. So they say, okay, on top of that 3210, we're going to give you 7%. So we're going to reinvest this 3210 for another year. And you're going to get 107% of that. Now this is different than what we had before because um, Derek was only going to pay Josh 7% uh, over the whole five years. Now here, we're getting... Um, interest on top of the interest that we paid before. So 320 times uh, 1.07. Now our new amount is 3434. 
and how many cents? 70 cents. And now we're going to reinvest this in the next year. 34, 34, 70. We're going to reinvest that at 7%. And what do we get? Uh, times 1.07. Uh, 36, 75, 13. 36, 75, 13. Now I'm just going to quickly uh, do the next two calculations. Okay, so what we end up with here is 42, oops, that's not the color I want to undo. Let's go with yellow. Uh, 420766 is what we get as a final, final amount. Now remember, this is what uh, Derek was going to give him, uh, or what he was going to end up with after Derek gave him simple interest. So compound interest added up a whole lot quicker. We've got another $157.66 over here. Um, now, we don't have to do this every time. Uh, it's really tedious, and um, we could get a spreadsheet to do it, but we're not going to. We're going to use a formula and I'm going to show you how to punch it in and you're going to need a scientific calculator. So here's our compound interest formula. Um, the amount we have after n compound periods, and here's our n compound periods, um, is equal to the principal amount, the initial amount invested, uh, times 1 plus the interest rate per compound period as a decimal. That's important. And n is the number of compound periods per loan. Now you have to be careful when you're using this, so we're going to go into using the compound interest formula. Um, most interest rate are given annually, and this in the formula is supposed to be the compound interest rate. So our annual interest rate is going to be divided by the number of compound periods per year. Now n is the duration in years. Oftentimes n is going to, you're going or, sorry, n is the number of compound periods. And oftentimes you're only going to be given the years, and so you have to multiply by the number of compound periods per year. So you have to be a little bit careful with this one, and we're going to do a few examples to show you how it's done. So determine the amount if $25,000 is invested at 3.5% compounded annually for five years. How much interest is earned? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put down our A pin down the side. A P I N. And we have to figure out what we're looking for here. So what are the most important things here? We've got $2,500, we've got 3.5% and we have five years. And we're being asked for, I'm going to do this in pink, the amount. So since we're being asked for the amount, I'm going to put a question mark beside the A. Now principal is the initial amount invested, so in this case it's $2,500. Now I is the interest rate as a decimal, 0 0.035, but we have to divide that by the number of compound periods. Well, this is being compounded annually, so there's only one compound period per year. So that's just going to be 0 0.035, because dividing by 1 does nothing. And then it asks us for how many years? Well, for 5 years. So we're going to stick that 5 in there. And since this is being compounded only once every year, we don't have to worry about it. So here's how we're going to plug it in. A equals P1 plus I to the N. P is 2,500. 1 plus 0 0.035 and our n is 5. Now this part is easy. This thing in here, everybody should be able to add those together. This is now going to be 2500 times 1.035. We just have to put a 1 in place of that 0 and it's to the exponent 5. Now here's how we're going to punch this into our calculator and I'm going to pull back, pull this calculator over here. Uh, we're going to start by doing this thing here. We have to do that exponent first. So we're going to punch in 1.035 and then we have to go to the exponent 5. Now I'm not going to multiply this by itself five times. Not going to do it. I'm going to hit this little x to the y button and you probably have that on your own. And see, look at that. It raises the displayed number to 
a value. So I'm going to put 2 the exponent, and in this case, 5. And then, without writing anything else down, now that I've got this answer, I'm going to multiply that by 2,500. And now I have my final answer, 2,969 and 22. This one is going to round to a 2 because it has a 5 after it. Uh, 2,969, 22. 2969, 22. And that's how much we have afterwards. Uh, now, this says how much interest is earned. This is the total amount of money I have. So if I want to know the interest, um, I have to figure it, I have the interest equals the amount minus the principal. So I have to actually take the amount I have, 2969, 22, and subtract what I invested, which was 25 hundred dollars which means that I have four hundred and sixty nine dollars and twenty two cents in interest carrying on determine the amount if twenty five hundred dollars is invested at three point five percent compounded monthly now how is this different than the last one we've still got twenty five hundred dollars and I still don't want that color we've still got twenty five hundred dollars at 3.5% in five years. How is this any different than the one we just did? Well, it's all in this word here, monthly. Monthly means that we're going to do it 12 times a year. So we're going to have to make some adjustments in our calculations. Let's still write our A pin down the side here. A pin is all the letters in our compound interest formula. And remember, our compound interest formula is A equals 1 plus I to the N. Now, it says determine the amount. So we're still looking for the amount, which means I'm still going to put a question mark beside the A. Our principal is still 2,500. And our interest rate per year is 0 0.035 when I turn that into a decimal, except that now this is over 12 times a year, so I have to divide that by 12 because the interest rate I want, I want the monthly interest rate. And this is our yearly interest rate, so I divide it by 12. And the same, this is for five years, but they're going to give me interest every month. So to calculate the number of times they give me interest, I'm going to go 5 times 12, which in this case is 0, or is 60. 60. Okay, so here's how I'm going to type this in. Uh, I'm going to, oop, I missed the principal on that one. I missed the letter P. A equals P, 1 plus I to the N. Okay, so I'm going to do $2,500. 1, that's not a 1. Uh, 1 plus our I is 0 0.035 over 12, and it's going to be to the 60. Now, here's how we're going to type it into the calculator. We're going to type this part in first. That's going to be our first calculation. Then we're going to add these things together. That's going to be our calculation number two. Then we're going to raise it to the exponent 60. That's going to be our calculation three. And at the very last, we're going to take and multiply these two things together. That's going to be our calculation four. So that's the order we're going to do it in, and we're going to do it in that order every time, and you only have to write your final answer down. So here's how you're going to type it in. You're going to do 0 .035 divided by 12 and hit equals. Then we're going to add 1 because I have to do this together, so I go add 1 and hit equals. Now I want to raise it to the exponent 60, so I hit this little button here to the xy, and I hit the 60. And now it's 1.1909. 1 .1, and the last thing I do is multiply by this number. That's the fourth calculation, so times 2,500. And that is 2,977. 2,977 and 36 cents. Now, what was the difference between this one and the last one? Well, let's look back at the last one. Our final answer was 2969.22. So it was 
So I actually have more money this time. Now this says how much interest is earned, so we have to actually make that calculation again. Remember interest is going to be the amount minus the principal, and in this case the amount is 25, uh, or sorry, the amount is 29.77, 29.77.36. Minus the principal of 2500 gives us total interest of $477.36, which is more than we had before. Remember, last time our interest was $469.22. So just by compounding it monthly instead of yearly, I got an extra little bit of cash, another, another eight bucks or so. Okay, what's the next one? Whoops. There isn't a next one, that's it. Uh, you have some questions that you can do.